enough of that. That was scary, wasn't it? And it was scary when I found out the other day why I can no longer move my big toe. And I'm going to reveal why in today's episode. You may have noticed over the past few months in some of our episodes, I've been limping. And believe you me, I've noticed it too. And I've had pain in my big toe when I walk. And it's one of those things, you know, you just put it off. You don't go to see the doctor. Well, the other day I was having a routine blood test and I just happened to mention to the nurse that I had this pain and she was able to expedite an appointment for me to see a podiatrist and I've just done that and I got news that I really wasn't expecting. I thought that perhaps I had a fracture or even broken a bone but no it is something completely different. I've got a condition that my grandmother had and I thought at the age of 51 right now would I have this as well? I've got osteoarthritis in my big toe. I've got a condition called hallux rigidus and it basically means stiff big toe and it's reached a stage where there really isn't anything that can be done to reverse what has happened. Surgery could be an option in extreme cases but it's not the first option. The first option is that I should be getting shoes that will limit the amount of movement that my big toe was forced to do because basically it doesn't bend anymore. So what has happened is, is that the cartilage has fused onto the bone and it means that the joint in the big toe up in this sort of area here, if you like, that's my finger, I know, um, that you don't want to see my toes again. I don't even <laughs> want to see my toes. It's fused together so it doesn't bend. Well, I've got some information about the condition here. And there is a pre-condition when there's some movement and that's called hallux limitus. So hallux limitus or hallux rigidus is a gradual condition where the movement at the big toe joint decreases with time. In the early stage, the movement at the joint will have only reduced a little. But as the problem advances, the movement becomes less and eventually the big toe joint becomes stiff. The protective tissue around the joint called cartilage can become damaged causing extra bone to form around the joint. This extra bone will restrict movement and will cause pain when walking. So what are the symptoms and signs? Well you may experience all or all of the following. Pain usually at the top of your big toe joint that worsens with weight bearing activity. Check. Difficulty bending your big toe. Check. A bony lump or soft tissue swelling on the top of your big toe joint that may hurt when it rubs against your shoe. Partial check. There is a lump of bony tissue and it's not causing me any uh, pain when rubbing against the shoe. So that's a plus point at least. Numbness or tingling if the bony lump is pressing on your nerves. That hasn't happened to me, thank goodness. So there is no specific cause of hallux limitus or hallux rigidus, but there are a number of things that can increase your risk. The most common cause is trauma, as this can lead to arthritic changes within the big toe joint. Unusual foot anatomy can also increase your risk. The length of your big toe can affect the function of the joint. Now that's interesting to me because I used to play tennis, believe it or not, and I had a coach at one time and he put me through all this training and I had a bit of a fall and it ripped the nail off one of my toes. Now it could have been that toe or that toe could have been affected. We're talking about 20 years ago. So that is a possibility. It also said unusual foot anatomy. Well, that foot is completely normal looking, but my other foot, I've got hammer toes. And when I saw the medic about this, um, she said that my left foot may have been compensating for my right foot 
for its abnormalities all these years. It's a possibility. Now it also says, and this is information from the NHS, all this, you may have contributing factors related to hallux limitus or rigidus, which is known as osteoarthritis. Acute injury, for example, stubbing your toe. Well, that's what I just said, possibly with the tennis. Repetitive trauma with movements that will increase load through the big toe joint, for example, squatting. No. Changes in the shape of the bones in your foot that can lead to osteoarthritis in the big toe. Well, there certainly have been changes to the shape of the bones. Inflammatory diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis. I haven't been diagnosed with that as yet. Unsupportive, ill-fitting footwear, possibly. Family history, possibly. And apparently, it runs in Irish families. Um, well, sort of like uh, disformed misshaped toes and feet and everything yeah i think my mother actually had wonky toes as well so it is possibly hereditary but that's not the problem we're talking about today it is the osteoarthritis so what is the first thing that i need to do well as i said surgery is probably not an option at least not at this stage so i've been advised by my medical professional to get pronation trainers with a rocker sole a hard firm with no band. And when we talk about band, if I can sort of try to lean up here, we're talking about this part of the shoe. So we want a shoe that does not bend like this. And to help the condition in the meantime, I can use ice or heat. Well, I have been using deep heat cream on it. And in fact, I've been preempting that I might have pain and have been using that some days. But the next thing before I buy my new shoes is to go through the shoes that I've got and to discard the ones which in the meantime I shouldn't be wearing. So the shoes that I'm wearing at the moment out of all the ones that I've got these were the best ones. Now they're actually sort of on their last legs no pun intended because well, they look okay but the inside is becoming a little bit frayed and it's starting to rub on my heel. So. I will be getting rid of these as soon as I get new shoes. But the ones that I was told to get rid of immediately were my work shoes. And the good news is that I am now officially medically required to wear trainers at all times, which means <laughs> I don't have to wear work shoes to work. And if anyone says anything, well, it's a medical reason. But look at this. This is the Bending. bend. So this bends. And it means if the shoe bends, then your toes are wanting to bend with it, which means if you have a stiff toe, then it's not going to bend and it's going to cause the pain. So it, it exacerbates that. Now, fortunately, these shoes, again, were, they were fraying inside anyway. And they, that doesn't help. Yeah, that doesn't help. And inside this one, the lining was coming away. So I'm not so bothered about having to get rid of those. These were cheap trainers that I bought at Dunn stores and they have a bit of a problem in that even though the insole that came with it is actually glued to the base of the shoe when my foot heats up the glue the insole started to, to move and the insole that I had with it as well started to move with it too and it was sliding and then causing a ridge okay. so they were quite uncomfortable to wear and I don't wear slippers, but my indoor shoes, if you like, were these. But this is probably the worst example because look at that. Oh gosh. Yeah, so look at the band. So no wonder I was having pain even when I was like walking around the house. So I'm afraid there's only one place for all these shoes. Please. And that is the bin. So it's time to bin my shoes. Bye-bye. It's one week since my diagnosis and since getting rid of those shoes, I have been wearing the remaining shoes that I've got oh. and I've actually got some really quite bad pain in my toe today so we're on a mission to get the new shoes that um, I was recommended so I've got a list here of what I need to get 
they should be pro nation trainers with a rocker sole. Oh. Hard but a hard and firm, but no bend in the toe area. So it's to keep my toe straight. And boy, do I need them. We've come to the London designer outlet, outlet at Wembley Park. Yeah, at Wembley Park. And we are hoping that we are going to get the shoes here at, if I can pronounce this right, Essex. That's right. Um, oh, nice to see another film crew just ahead. And there are other shops here as well. There's a, a Skechers a Nike. and a Nike. So there are choices, but I think Essex is going to be my number one port of call. And if I find something that is comfortable, I'll get two pairs. <laughs> I got well I've had a double success not only did I get a pair of pro nation trainers at Asics but we went into Adidas or Adidas <laughs> and now it seems I know what I need and I found something which seemed I wouldn't say better than Asics but maybe in a slightly different sort of plane a different kind of sphere but certainly something that will do the same job so we're gonna have a look around the other shops and then we will show you what I got so I've got two pairs of sneakers and the first ones came from Essex and these are Pro Nation which is what the podiatrist told me to get so it's got an inbuilt rocker in here so that's why it doesn't look that big on the outside it's all internal there's a bit of bend on this however it's almost you could say pre-bent so if I get the the left one out which is the one where my my problem toe is when I put this on this just felt so comfortable and the interesting thing is I've gone up a size I was size 9 but these are size 10 size 9 was really far too tight and the lady in the shop said that a lot of people who go into Essex walk out either one or two sizes bigger. So I don't know if it's something to do with their sizing, but she did feel where the toe was and I explained what my problem was. Um, so we'll see how I get on with these, but they are very comfortable. Now you will note that they are red and this was the most neutral color that I could find. And when I go to work, I'm also gonna have to wear <laughs> sneakers from now on. So I didn't particularly think red would be suitable for everyday work use. Although, you know, if I have to be in comfort. So if that's what I have to wear, that's what I have to wear. However- yeah, At least it isn't neon or something. Ah, yes. But then I went to Adidas, or Adidas, whatever you want to say. And now I kind of know what I'm looking for. I picked up these. And if you look at this, there's a, there's no bend. Oh. here at all I can't that's as much as it will go um, it's got quite a large heel so I don't know if this is a rocker or not but when I put these on just similarly to the other ones I didn't feel any pain in my toe at all 
Now, of course, I've only been walking around the shops in them and trying them out and about might be a different story, but I think I am heading in the right direction. <laughs> It's been a week since I got my new shoes. I've been wearing the Asics every day I've been out and there's been a noticeable difference. My toe hasn't been as sore. Now I'm not saying the pain has gone away, it hasn't because my condition hasn't improved and it won't unless I have surgery or a cortisone injection, I suppose. But at least it is giving me some relief. And what I also noticed was on two days when I didn't leave the house this week and I was just wearing my regular sneakers, the ones that I bought and had before this diagnosis, um, that there wasn't really any pain as well. The other thing I noticed was one day I did have to go to a local shop and I just put on my old regular sneakers and I could hardly walk in them. I was limping and it took me quite some time just to walk what should be a five minute walk to the shop. So I would say that these ASICS sneakers really have given me some sort of relief. I haven't worn the Adidas ones yet. They will be the next ones to try. It's a week later again, two weeks since I got the sneakers and for the first time today I'm wearing the Adidas or Adidas ones and these were the ones that I picked out myself they've got no bend like this and they were immediately comfortable when I put them on and what I also find interesting about all this is that previously when I looked for sneakers or trainers I would try multiple pairs on until I found some that were comfortable but immediately the one that they picked out at ASICS and this one that I picked out at Adidas simply because of the no bend. They were immediately comfortable. Maybe these have been the answer to my feet problems all my life. I've always needed wide shoes as well. But I'll no longer be wearing formal shoes because unless I can find any that have the same sort of no bend and that are comfortable, then I will be sticking with sneakers. While here in New York, I was able to pick up this tub of arthritis pain relief cream at CVS Pharmacy. And I've never seen anything like this before, but then again, I wasn't really looking out for this sort of product. But I thought as I've got osteoarthritis in my big toe, maybe I should try it out. So it contains histamine dithydrochloride. Oh, I didn't know I could say that. And I open it up it's just like a white cream inside and you take like a pea-sized amount on your finger and then you apply it onto the affected area and it's supposed to relieve the pain and i have to say it has actually worked so i might see some of this at home as well i don't know i'm going to be looking out for products like this but there's quite a lot here so it's going to last me quite some time and hopefully offer me some relief Hello. Oh yes, it's Paul and Marcus on YouTube. I've spoken before about the problems that I have with going to the dentist and the hygienist because of my gag reflex. Well, I saw a hygienist today at the practice and she gave me some really good tips. Um, I'd had to cancel my previous appointment because I've been suffering from a bit of anxiety, but I managed to get a cancellation, otherwise I might have had to wait three months. And the hygienist that I saw put me at ease immediately. And it was a situation where I went in the morning and I'm normally going in the afternoon because my gag reflex seems to get better as the, uh, the day goes on. And I was feeling okay about it, um, even though it was a morning appointment. But she did put me at ease, as I say, but I did start to gag a little bit. But then she had some tricks up her sleeve. And one of them was to wiggle my fingers and to wiggle my toes 
and to stop occasionally and to take a really deep breath through my nose. And we got through the session relatively well. And at the end, she says, I'm going to write down a few bits and pieces for you to take note of. And here they are. And these are some things that I'd never even thought of before. So I'm gonna be trying these out over the next few months. And when you see this, I will have just gone back to the hygienist for my next appointment. So we will be able to wrap things up hopefully at the end to see how I got on. But the tips were, that you don't have to brush all your teeth in one go. Because what I find is it's like a whole sort of build up ride. I have to brush my teeth and then the gag reflex comes. But you can just do like either one arch. So like the top or the bottom or just one side. And she also said to start at the back and then work your way towards the front because the gag reflex, it's in here, it's at the back. So if you're at the front, you don't even have to open your mouth to brush. You can just put the brush in and work your way around like that. But to get in at the back properly, you really do uh, sort of will set the, the gag reflex off. Another tip that she had was that when I'm brushing, I'm only sort of getting the, the teeth part and not the gums. So she said to angle the toothbrush and to even like angle myself because gravity plays a big part in the gag reflex. She also suggested that I could stand on one leg. I'm doing that right now and I'm going to topple over. So I'm not sure if that one's going to work, but it's an interesting idea. And I had spoken before on the show about hypnotherapy and she brought it up herself and she said that there are podcasts out there to listen to that touch on hypnotherapy in relation to anxiety and that could help with the gag reflex. So I'm going to look into that and I will be reporting back in this episode um, on what I've been able to research during now, which is August and November, which is my next appointment. And two very interesting things that she said and I didn't even know that the first of these existed. She said to buy a children's toothbrush. So I do use an electric toothbrush, but you can get children's heads for it. Not the, chil not the heads of children, but children sized. So they're small, but she said that um, the, the heads that you get are quite big, even for like normal people without a gag reflex. And the other thing was, flavoured toothpaste because I guess you do put an emphasis on okay minty toothpaste and there's an association built up there and if there's a gag reflex the taste could set it off who knows it's all to do with the brain so I went shopping after my appointment and this is what I got I was able to buy two replacement brush heads universal for four plus years compatible with most oral B toothbrushes and the heads are slightly smaller than the adult ones. I also got a selection of interdental brushes. Now I can't really use floss because the action of putting your hand in there and everything sets off the, the gag reflex. So the hygienist suggested to get a selection of sizes and that's what I did. And while I was actually at the dentist, she gave me this, which is an interspace for the electric toothbrush. And it's a tiny head, so it's even smaller than the children's one. And this will help get into the gums. And a few other interdental brushes of different sizes to try out. It's bedtime now, and I've brought out my little head. This isn't the children's one, this is the interdental type one so it does fit i've tested it it goes on to my normal toothbrush like this oh gosh now this is going to be quite fast i think so i know i shouldn't be running the to uh, running the water while having the toothbrush on but i like a little bit of water on it so we'll do that and i guess i only need a very tiny amount of toothpaste on there in fact you don't even need any at all really and um, I've been sort of shown how to do it, sort of go up like this. And it's to get the teeth at the back. 
and the hygienist did say start at the back so that's what I'm going to do oh. Oh. okay and I'm trying to get up to the gun you see so that's what I'm doing going to the gun line I'm not actually on the main part of the turf but I can feel that I think it might be blood Let's go back again. I'm going to do the rotten ones now. Yeah, I can definitely feel something. I'm going down to the gum line. And now I'm going to the inside. Ah, ah. Okay. Mm. There's a little bit of a gagging. And I think that's because I touched my tongue, but we'll, we'll keep going. Oh. Oh. Okay. That's as much as I can do there. Let's have a go on the other side. A little bit of toothpaste again. I can definitely feel it working though. So that's a good thing. Okay. I've got one wisdom tooth at this side left, so I'm going up to the right to the back. And I'm going to come right up to here, which is my implant. And I'm going to get right up in there. Oh, I can feel it. I can feel that. And I think there's blood. I tried the bottom one. And tried. Ah, oh, ah, oh, oh. oh. It's hurt. Hey. Oh. Okay. There's a little bit of blood. I think that's as far as I can go with that. However. I haven't done the front one, so I'm going to change the head. So I'm taking that one off and I've got my children's head here. So it's smaller than the normal adult one. So I'll just show you Paul's toothbrush because he's got the, the regular head on. So you can see there is a difference there. That's the adult one, that's the children's one. Okay, a little bit of water. And a little bit of toothpaste. And I'm going to go along the front. Same sort of routine. Bottom ones now. Ah, I can feel that. I can feel. And five. Oh. 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 Mm. So you can tell I definitely need some additional help. So whether the hypnotism is the right thing, I don't know. But perhaps I should start off by having a listen to a podcast. Hmm. Now I will do some flossing. I had been using um, this green one but to get to the space, quite a large space on this side of the implant and the red one, which is a smaller one, to go on the other side. But I've got the other ones to try, but we'll show you that another time. It's the last week of November and I'm recovering from a bout of laryngitis. My voice is almost back, but it's still a bit croaky. A week ago, I could hardly talk at all. And I have a hygienist appointment and my annual dental checkup today. It's been three months since my last visit to see the hygienist, 
and I'm afraid I haven't done very well. Uh, I think it's been a mixture of being on, on holiday, just not getting into the routine, being stressed at work, and being ill, I guess, in the last few weeks, um, have all contributed to me not looking after my dental routine as best I can. No, I do brush. I brush probably too much. But as you know, the problem is when I try to floss, I retch. And this is why I kind of dread these appointments because I never know really how I'm going to be affected. Sometimes I'm okay. Others, it's pretty bad. I normally try to get appointments later in the afternoon because I tend to be better later in the day. Today's appointment is at noon, so it is going to be testing, I think, trying. Now, I was given some tips by the hygienist the last time, and I did carry some of them out. I was able to get a smaller brush head for my electric toothbrush, and that seems to have helped. And I also did get a interdental brush for it as well but I haven't been using it I think it's all due to <clears throat> just being out of the routine um, she also suggested other things such as standing on one leg to try to break that habit of not the habit but the sort of um, the usual way when I, when I brush if I can change that some way so as I don't sort of associate brushing with just standing at the sink normally. But uh, I've been diagnosed with osteoarthritis in my big toe. So standing on one leg is actually now proving to be difficult. And my balance wasn't great beforehand. So I'm just turning down this street. The dentist is down here. My appointment is due to last four. I think 45 minutes, it might run to an hour because I have my annual checkup which coincides with this um, hygienist appointment. So I will let you know how I got on when I get out. <sighs> well, it's been uh, quite a day. I had x-rays and um, it took the entire appointment for my gag reflex to settle down so as that I could have them and uh, they had to use like a children's size um, device for one of them. But I got through it. Uh, my hygienist is really good. She, she does put me at ease. But at the end of the day, it just depends how, how I'm feeling. And it, my gag reflex was particularly bad today. So um, I'll be contacted if there's anything untoward that comes up in the, in the x-rays. Otherwise, my next appointment will be in March, so hopefully things will be okay until then. I'm going to do my best to, to floss and to brush and do everything I've been told to do, that I've been advised to do. It's just so difficult and I've got this gag reflex. However, my hygienist has given me information about the uh, Council for Hypnotists and I'm going to look into that because I think I need to get this this sorted. Gag reflex is just so bad sometimes and it was today and if there's some way I could overcome this I think I've got to look into it. Taking time to reflect, Paul? Hmm, yes. I think it's time for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Paul and Marcus. So I'm on my way to see the nurse at the health centre to 
receive a piece of news which I knew was coming, or at least I suspected it was, um, I received an update on my online patient record earlier this week to basically say that I am pre-diabetic for the second time. Paul's got this condition as well, so he knows very well what it entails. I kind of knew this was coming because I have put on so much weight, I eat too many sugary sweets and drinks. So when the nurse gives me the news, and unless the diagnosis online is completely wrong, and then I'm not going to be totally surprised by it, I'm going to have to change my ways. I've done it before because I was pre-diabetic in 2019 and I was able to join an NHS pre-diabetic prevention course and I went to fortnightly meetings I think it was and then it became monthly but I lost two stone over the course of about nine months and I then fell out of the pre-diabetic danger zone and then something happened in 2020 which caused me to put on all that weight again plus more it was the pandemic sitting at home for two years not really going anywhere doing anything apart from working from home uh, really put paid to all that good work and maybe this diagnosis explains my fatigue and my tiredness and my insomnia perhaps as well I know I've done it before I could lose the weight I'm older now I've got a problem with my foot which is restricting my mobility so it's going to be more difficult anyway let's see what the nurse says Right, well, I've just seen the nurse and I suppose you should never actually trust your instinct on the readings that you get before you actually speak to someone. The situation is that I'm actually officially not pre-diabetic, although I'm close to it. Um, I scored 40 in the, the blood ratio test. Medics, you can forgive me for not knowing the exact terms. Um, but 42 means that you are pre-diabetic and I was 42 in 2019 when I was put onto that course that I mentioned. So I am 40 now, I wish I was 40 years old again, but anyway. Um, so what they're going to do, they are going to put me onto a weight loss management course. I believe it lasts for 12 weeks and it's a, I believe it's a group, but it's, a de it's definitely face to face. And they set you tasks, I guess things to eat, possible exercise. So they're gonna contact me. But in the meantime, I know what I have to do. I should really just cut out sugar immediately. I have sugar in my tea and coffee. Why don't I just switch that for, for sweeteners? I think because I pick up little packets of sugar when I'm in a cafe and I've got a whole stack of it. That's probably why I just have gone on to the sugar again because I did use sweeteners for a long time. And try to eat some fruit perhaps. Try not to binge eat late at night. That's one of my biggest issues. If I can just look at those three things to start with, wouldn't that be something? Paul, you shouldn't be doing this in public. Have you been drinking too much water again? Don't be silly. I am just standing next to the water feature. And I must say that I do want to feature our YouTube channel. It's Paul and Marcus. So why not subscribe today if you haven't done so already? Hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much. We're now into early to mid January and a few things are colliding health wise. So the rest of this episode is going to be one diary piece rather than broken into individual health matters. Now, 
I'm going to start off by saying that the first thing today is kind of health related but kind of not. Well, I don't, I, I don't actually know which it is yet because it's all to do with my death. So today I am off to the solicitors to execute my will. Now I already have a will in place but I needed to make some changes. Um, I shouldn't really go into detail, so that'll maybe be for another episode. But things do change over the years. And my current will, which is a mirror will with Paul, is 13 years old. And our new wills are also going to be mirror wills. So that's what I'm doing today. But I thought I'd update you on my foot and also my teeth. So let's start off with my foot and I've been using the deep heat cream some days when I go out and other days I've been using this uh, arthritis uh, cream that I bought in New York and both seem to be having a good enough effect. There's still some pain when I'm walking. There is at the moment. I mean I seem to be walking fairly okay uh, but my big toe is sore and it's blooming cold here as well I can't keep this scarf on look anyway um, you'll remember that I had two pairs of sneakers and uh, I've discovered that one of them is actually causing a little bit more pain and I think it's because the laces are quite tight when I tie them up and I'm having to double tie them now as well uh, because they were coming loose all the time and it was so annoying when I was walking along and then every 20 minutes or so my laces would become undone now the laces that came with those particular sneakers were quite shiny uh, so I replaced them the other ones didn't seem to work much better so I replaced them again and then a friend said, well, why don't you just double knot? I was never really a fan of double knotting, but it seems to have worked. But I'm not wearing those ones as much, even though they probably are better for me than the ones I am wearing today, uh, which are the Asics. Now, Asics is good, but these ones are softer than the other ones. So the other ones are Nike uh, and they've got like the firm sole which i was told to get but i just find that some days it's easier just to wear these ones it feels more comfortable so that's what i'm doing today so i've had some good news in relation to my teeth and it's good news that has been brought upon by myself because i've managed to floss thoroughly for three nights in a row now last night i didn't because and when I got home from work, I was like so tired uh, and I had to prepare for this today. So I'm afraid I didn't floss last night, but the three previous nights I thoroughly flossed and hopefully I'll do that again tonight because I don't have work today. Uh, so I'll have a little bit more time to do that. And what I've noticed is that around the implant I was sort of poking it a bit not that it was sore but I just poked it and then smelt my finger and it was a little bit smelly so there must be some sort of pus coming out of it and that is I suppose shows the importance of flossing so that's the little update I'll be back as soon as I've executed my will so you'll see that in a moment uh, I'll just tell you what it was like. My will is complete. It was quite straightforward. Uh, the execution took about an hour and a half to do. And I'm just glad that I got to this day that I was still alive to be able to make this update at will because there were quite some significant changes uh, compared with the previous one, which has now been revoked because all wills new wills are made means that the uh, 
previous one is always automatically revoked in the UK anyway so what I'm also going to do I've set up an appointment with the solicitor to do a lasting power of attorney because I think that's quite important if you listen to Martin Lewis the money saving expert um, he gives a lot of advice on this so look it up to see what it's all about uh, so I've got an appointment in a couple of weeks time to do that <laughs> It's late February and it's a lovely sunny day, a very cold day. And I am making a unscheduled visit to the dentist because for the past week or so, I've been having toothache and it's on a molar, which I've suffered pain from before. But the thing is, I had root canal on this tooth, so there isn't actually a nerve attached. So it could be some sort of phantom pain, I don't know. But one time it was infected and I had to get antibiotics. Another time my dentist couldn't see anything wrong with it and the pain just went of its own accord. And it has slightly improved since I was able to make this emergency appointment. Um, but there's still a little bit of sensitivity, I suppose. So I've got this appointment today to see exactly what is happening. I've actually not been too well this week. I had to take a sick day from work because I had a rather unfortunate incident on the way home from work on Monday, the start of this week, it's now Friday, um, which I think was caused by food poisoning and it left my stomach feeling rather ropey for a couple of days. But I've got a long weekend while I'm filming this. It's actually Paul's birthday weekend and we are going to Bath tonight actually. So because I've got this appointment at midday, the dentist, uh, we've had to kind of rearrange our plans. So Paul's having to take our luggage to uh, the station where we're starting our journey. And we then have to get one particular ticket to get to one station. Then we've got a few hours there, which is Reading and then we have our booked tickets to go on to Bath. So I had a very early start, half past seven this morning. That's early for me. I'm normally not up until 10, sometimes 11, because I work late and don't go to bed till half past two in the morning. But I was just so thrilled to see such a lovely sunny day. It's clouded over a little bit now, but I'm feeling not too bad about this appointment. Hopefully, it's only going to be an examination. I don't think I need anything actually done apart from the possibility of antibiotics if it is infected. Um, but we shall see. Well, it's not good news about my tooth. Um, I had x-rays taken, which showed that since the last x-ray from a few years ago was taken, um, a lot of infection on the gum has eaten away at the bone so there is a one centimeter gap which explains why the tooth kind of feels a bit hollow to me um i'm going to have to have it taken out it's not urgent so i can choose when this is going to happen um i have to psych myself up for it so there we are i mean it is a really old amalgam filling it's a big deep filling there's more filling than tooth and to be quite honest as i can't brush it because of my gag reflex it might actually be better to have it out the dentist said that you know at least you'll be able to brush around there and to be honest my bite has felt a little bit weird probably because the tooth is misshapen probably because the bone is disappeared all these things together so I'm going to give it a decent burial no I don't want to see it to be honest it doesn't look good in my mouth and I certainly don't want to see it outside my mouth well I'm actually coming back to the surgery in a week and a half from now because I have my hygienist's appointment so there will be a little update to come in this episode
It's time once again for my annual glaucoma checkup, and I've come to the surgery near Hillingdon that I visit every year for this. And it's just to make sure that there are no signs of glaucoma. Now, I think I've said in the past that when I have an eye test, they do the puffing air test, and I have a bit of a reaction to it. So it makes it come out with um, incorrect readings. And I think that is one of the reasons why they want to keep an eye on things, if you like. So they're going to make my pupils dilate, not dilute, but dilate, by putting in uh, drops. And it means I won't be able to see that well for about three or four hours afterwards, because they're going to be very sensitive to light. After I had the test last year, I went to work. Well, actually, I went back home and worked from home, but it was very uncomfortable because I had to like look at a screen and for about three hours, my eyes were like this. So I've taken the precaution of booking the day off at work today. In fact, I'm off tomorrow as well because it's my hygienist appointment and I really should be booking an appointment to have my tooth extracted. Uh, this has really been weighing me down. I've been making myself feel a little bit sick, actually, just the thought of getting this tooth out. But today it's all about the eyes. The eyes have it. Yeah, you can see the dye. Well, it was quite nice, actually. I will wipe it off before I see any other members of the public. I don't want to scare them. Um, so the good news is, is that the pressures in both eyes are normal. They registered 19. I don't know what that means, but it must be good. Um, there was some slight deterioration in the nerve, I think she said, on the right eye. Um, so they want to see me again in six months because of that. And also because in the field of vision test, which is the one where you have the little buzzer to press like on a quiz show and you look at the green light and then you try to see all the white lights around it that I missed a few. I was aware that I had missed some because I was blinking a few times. My eyes are very sensitive and I think with that test you're supposed to try to keep your eyes open the entire time. Um, I just couldn't do it so they want to see me in six months. It's normally every year that I come but they're going to monitor me in six months time again. So that's good that they are keeping an eye on things. So I'm now going to wipe off this dye and then tomorrow, in a few moments for you, I will be on my way to the dentist for my hygienist's appointment. And that will be the last part of this health episode, which has run quite a distance since last summer, hasn't it? It's Tuesday, the 5th of March and I am on my way to the hygienist. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do today. I was retching this morning when I was trying to brush my teeth so it could go either way. My appointment's at 1.45. I do prefer afternoon appointments because the guy reflex does seem to settle down as the day goes on. The later in the day the better but we'll see. Um, I have been paying extra attention trying to do my best by brushing around the implant and brushing in general but it is just so difficult. I admit I haven't had a chance to look into the hypnotism but it is something which is on my to-do list at some point but there's just so many other things in life at the minute I've just sort of I don't know I just feel as though I don't have time for anything. I sit up till half past two, three in the morning and still feel as though I'm behind in my days. So, I don't know. I'm at this age where I'm starting to feel that I'm running out of time. I will be 52 on the 18th of March. Does this go out before or after that? I can't remember. Um, but, you know, I have to admit that my days are numbered. So, I'm just trying to fit in what I can. And I know I should be doing more to look after my teeth. I think, to be honest, I don't know how much more I can do because with the gag reflex, 
So maybe the hypnotism is the way forward eventually. Well, we'll see how the appointment goes and I'll give you my final report in a few moments. Well, that wasn't as bad as I feared. My hygienist puts salt on my tongue and that does seem to stop the gag reflex because there was a bit at the start before the actual sonic work started, um, the sonic um, cleaning, all that sort of stuff. Um, but she noticed that I had made an improvement with my brushing that was noticeable. I think the fact that it's noticeable that I have made improvements has given me some encouragement to continue. Um, she did say that it would be probably best to have the tooth extracted at the, the molar sooner rather than later because if there's bacteria building up that is circulating around my body and we don't want that. So yeah, that will happen. It won't be in this episode though because I think this one has run long enough. If you've got this far, thanks very much for watching. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do, because we're trying to hit a thousand subscribers this year and it would mean a lot to us. Also, please like the video if you liked it. Leave a comment, we read them all and reply to them if necessary. And uh, even if it's something bad you want to say, or if you've got advice for us or ideas, then do leave them. Well, that's it for today. We'll see you next time. Bye.